Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. You'll see here a tracer shaped hole in my garage. It's uh, just gone over to Anfield England for repairs as I record this, so it's going to be in there for a few more days yet. And uh, we're going to be looking at a bit of uh, repairs you can do on your own stuff if you own a GoPro or similar camera with a housing. After a while you might find the buttons are getting a bit stiff to operate. Quite a simple remedial procedure to uh, overcome this and that's what we're going to be looking at today. We start off with our camera housing. This is a second hand one that I bought. It's uh, over 10 years old and although it looks really nice, the uh, buttons are actually starting to seize in the housing. Um, quite easy fix if a little bit fiddly. So a few things you're going to need, a good pair of tweezers, a selection of jeweler's screwdrivers, uh, flat bladed ones, a tool with a hook on it, a pair of slight nose pliers, which are good to have around anyway, especially the smaller ones for certain fiddly jobs. And of course, you're going to need some lubrication. Don't use Vaseline on these. Um, in time, it will actually eat the rubber O-rings that we're going to be looking at when we fish them out. So this is CNC uh, O-ring lubricant from underwater cameras from an oyster dive. <clears throat> the bits we're aiming to get out are the E-clips. There's one on each of the buttons. You can see one here end on on the front of the camera and on the side of the camera you'll see the one side on in its groove. Now we're going to be aiming for the two holes here with a precision screwdriver. Carefully leave out the E-clip. I always aim to push the clip into the body of the camera so that if it does fly off it's actually going to be going in where I can find it. Then a quick tap on the hand and there we are. One very small E-clip. Pushing the rest of the button out is easy, push it from the inside, then use the hook tool when it's as far out as you can get it from the inside to carefully pull it out without damaging the housing. You'll see a spring and a plastic washer come out with it, there's a little bit of muck out here as well as you can see from the uh, life that camera's had before I got it and there's an o-ring in the end. Actually there's two of these so we'll use the hook tool to carefully get the first one out and then it's the same procedure for fishing out the second one. And there we go, a disassembled button assembly. Point to note at this juncture, the kitchen towel or tissue paper roll is not your friend. They'll leave little bits of uh, lint on the o-rings and could let water in, so fag papers. These are cheap and ideal if you haven't got any optical wipes. I have, I've got them for my telescopes and things, but uh, these are readily available get one off a mate who smokes roll-ups. Uh, I've had these ones for years so but get the uh, tweezers, wrap the paper around the tweezers and what we're going to do here is just have a careful poke into the hole in the camera. I'm not putting the tweezers in here, it's, they're just holding the end of the fag paper steady. That cleans out any old lubricants in there and then the same thing, just get any old grease off of the o-rings, give them a quick wipe wipe through the hole in the middle of the donut as well and uh, you're good to go and start uh, lubricating and reassembly. You can also lubricate the pin of the button, something I do, give it a wipe down then give it a quick dab of lubricant a bit later on in the process. And here we go, tiny spot of lubricant on a finger, you may be allergic or react to this stuff, if so wear gloves, little uh, thin surgical type gloves. Finger and thumb, give it a good rub round, make sure you get some lubricant in the centre of the o-ring, then wipe your hands. This stuff is horrible, it will stick to everything and you don't want it going on the lens piece of the camera housing. So with a precision screwdriver, you'll see um, it's got a step in it so you can put the o-rings over. Make sure that it's small enough for the o-rings to easily slide over. You don't want to be damaging the inside of the o-rings. Then push the two o-rings back into the housing like so. The step will push them into the right place and voila! One camera housing with re reinstalled o-rings. Next job, the plastic washer, the spring and the pin will go together. The plastic washer goes against the o-ring to prevent any damage to the o-rings. So then the spring goes on top of that and the pin goes down the middle and holds it all together. And we'll push that back in the housing, carefully through the o-rings, make sure that they're all in place and straight away you'll feel a difference. 
get the e-clip uh, check it for damage before you uh, put it back in it might have been slightly bent as you levered it out let's hold it in the snipe nose pliers find the groove on the pin you'll push it through with your finger as you're uh, putting the e-clip in so that you can get to the groove and then a little push on with the end of the pliers and it's all in place an alternative to over, special over in camera lube is uh, the stuff you get with an Avi helmet to lubricate up the pivots on it. Um, again, it's a silicon based, uh, it's in more of an oil than a grease, this stuff, and equally good for lubricating O rings. And finally, you'll see the amount of muck that was in behind the button that I've taken out. Obviously, this is a lot of use before being cleaned up and refurbished. So I'll get the other buttons out, give them a lubrication as well. And in about 10, 15 minutes, once you've got your hand in, you can uh, give your camera housing a servicing and uh, get it all ready for the nice warm summer we're all hoping for. And there you have it, a housing all fit, ready to go to shove a camera in it. Kaiser Bass housings, they work on the same sort of principles with the e-clips on the back of the buttons, uh, just as easy to service. So with the right tools and the right lubrication, it's a quite an easy job to get done and I would recommend you give it a go yourself if you're happy wielding tools. You get a good sense of satisfaction for doing a little job like this. You know, uh, servicing a bike may be beyond you, but doing something nice and simple gives you a nice warm feeling. Anyway, until the next video when hopefully my aching parts are starting to feel a bit better, I'll see you later and take care, especially when there's deer on the road.